and America is safer today than when I took office. The year before I took office, murder rates went up 30 percent. 30 percent they went up. The biggest increase in history. It was then. Through no. Through well, you guys obviously just saw a, uh, a father, a gold star father, get uh, pulled from the State of the Union. Of course, I'm also showing you guys something here in the um, B roll footage now. This where it was the scene. Once he got back to his family, they obviously were celebrating the fact that he basically told Joe Biden where to go, which really what happened was is that he brought up Abby Gate. He brought up the incident in Afghanistan where he. Uh, lost his son. We'll be talking about that in this video as well as the, taking you guys back to um, that incident where we lost 11 Marines, a soldier, and of course this also includes a corpsman as well. So make sure you guys stick around for the full video. Now, the State of the Union occurred on Thursday night. I basically watched it only for a little bit, and when I got to this part right here, I, for the most part, just just kind of like just just kind of cut it off. Just let it. I wouldn't say I cut it off. I just let it play in the background. Just kind of went on to doing my own things because obviously I wanted to do a State of the Union video and kind of uh, talk about some of the finer things that uh, were either a uh, missed or, were, quite frankly, were screwed up from said event. Because I think the State of the Union, quite frankly, is a joke. I don't even know why we still do it. As a matter of fact, the State of the Union originally was designed to be nothing more than a letter to Congress but now they've turned it into a great big giant show and a great big giant event. But still, though, this right here was obviously one of the moments from the State of the Union that the mainstream media obviously decided to talk about the following day. And for good reason, but still, though, we got to go back to that day, to that actual disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan and talk about why it is that nobody has the urge to join uh, this current military under this current administration. Now, I'll be linking this video right here in the description box for you guys. It's also very weird that I said linking because I'm thinking about the moment where Joe Biden called Lakin Riley, Lincoln Riley which also occurred during the State of the Union. And I've done a couple of videos on Lake and Riley in that situation. So maybe I'll link a couple there too. I'm not going to be touching that in this video because obviously because Joe Biden decided to say Lincoln Riley after a football coach, by the way, Obviously, the NFL world, the meme world, they're starting to mean that, and they've turned it to a joke when, obviously, it should not be a joke because the girl was killed by an illegal that uh, was arrested in New York City two years prior and was released by woke district attorney Alvin Bragg. By the way, Joe Biden's border crisis, as you guys can see, is something that uh, this administration uh, desperately is trying to ignore, and we have to hammer him on it every second of every day. But let's get back to this story. So... What exactly happened? Well, let me play you guys this two minute and 40 second news clipping so that way you guys can get a little bit more overall detail and we'll come back on the other side and we'll actually go back to that day that this disaster occurred. With that right there being said, let's go ahead and roll this. And to mean that and they've turned it to a joke when obviously it should not be a joke because the girl was killed by an illegal that uh, was arrested in New York City two years prior and was released by woke district attorney Alvin Bragg. By the way, Joe Biden's border crisis, as you guys can see, is something that uh, this administration uh, desperately is trying to ignore and we have to hammer him on it every second of every day. But let's get back to this story. So what exactly happened? Well, let me play you guys this two minute and 40 second news clipping so that way you guys can get a little bit more overall detail and we'll come back on the other side and we'll actually go back to that day that this disaster occurred. With that right there being said, let's go ahead and roll this. Union address likely set some sort of unofficial record tonight for the number of interruptions and or disruptions. The senior congressional correspondent Chad Pergram is live with more on that story. Chad, good evening. Trace, good evening. Disruption was the main theme tonight. Capitol Police arrested a Gold Star father shouting about Afghanistan and the attack at the Abbey Gate in 2021. Trace, listen to this. America is safer today than when I took office. The year before I took office, murder rates went up 30 percent. 30 percent they went up. The biggest increase in history. U.S. Capitol Police say they arrested 51-year-old Stephen Nakui. He's a Gold Star father. His son is Kareem Nakui, who was killed during the administration's botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. Nakui was the guest of GOP Florida Representative Brian Mast. The dad was shouting Abbey Gate and 2nd Battalion 1st Marines. 
was asked to stop but did not. He's charged with disrupting Congress. Lawmakers are upset about the arrest. To this day, President Biden will not say to her her son, Ryan Knauss's name. Not in private, not in public, not in multiple State of the Unions, and that's shameful. And I would never call him a heckler. I admire Steve, and I almost got kicked out myself because I couldn't stomach. Now, this father, he's not the only one who has been in the news. There was an incident that occurred the other day on CNN. I'll link this video right here in the description box where a Gold Star mom, one of the moms who lost her child that day in Afghanistan, where I said we lost 11 Marines, a corpsman, and a soldier. Uh, she basically had to correct the mainstream media. The mainstream media just kind of glossed over it after asking her how she felt. Basically, the main gripe that's been thrown out there is that the current president of the United States, when he met with the families at Dover Air Force Base, is that he decided he wanted to talk about Bo Biden. Now, really quick, in no way, shape, or form am I going to be insulting Bo Biden in this video. You guys already know my politics. If you're subscribed to this channel, you already know how I feel about Joe Biden. You already know how I feel about the entire thing. You already know who the hell I've chosen for president. You already know that. But one thing I will not do is I will not piss on another veteran or talk bad of another veteran who, quite frankly, has nothing to talk bad about. Bo Biden was actually the one Biden in that family that was actually what we would say actually worth something. And of course, it was tragic how he died. As a matter of fact, the truth be told about Biden, and you guys know me, I'm no fan of Joe Biden. Joe Biden himself has actually dealt with a lot of trauma in his family in his time in life. His uh, first wife was killed in a car accident. I don't want to get too far into that. He lost a baby in that one, and um, he also lost his wife. Pretty tragic, actually, to tell you the truth. So I can understand some of uh, Joe's emotional, or at least some of the emotions that Joe has. But one thing that Joe was definitely out of touch about was he decided he wanted to bring up Bo Biden in front of these parents who had just lost their children. By the way, these children were lost on his watch, which we'll talk about a little bit further in this video in a second. But the thing is this right here, and by the way, this video right here was designed to be much, much more serious in tone. So I'm just, just kind of like just telling you guys how I really truly feel this entire situation. Joe decided he wanted to bring up Bo and talk about uh, the fact that he lost his child in Iraq. Bo Biden did not die in Iraq. Bo Biden died of a brain tumor here in the United States at home around his family. These parents, these Gold Star parents, did not get to actually physically see their child as they died. They did not get to physically see their child, or they had not physically seen their children for months. And as a veteran myself who was deployed overseas twice, my war was Iraq. Go ahead and say what you want to in the comment section about that war. It's okay. I really, truly don't care. I'll, you know, we can talk about it later today. I understand how it is that a parent might feel, especially thinking that they may get the visit from the boys in the service alphas. Basically what happens is, is that, and I don't want to go too far into detail on this right here. Maybe I'll link a video in the description box, but um, basically what happens is, is that when a uh, soldier or Marine or serviceman dies overseas, the minute the word gets back to the States, uh, they immediately deploy a couple of people who are in dress uniforms to your actual house. Say, for example, you're a Marine, then obviously two Marines will show up wearing service alphas to give you the bad news as a parent. It's something that parents, quite frankly, don't want to have to go through. It's something that, quite frankly, every single parent dreads when they have a child who is stationed overseas or is currently in a conflict zone. That right there is the meat of this entire situation, was that uh, these men and women lost their lives unnecessarily. About six or seven months ago, Martha Raddatz at ABC, she decided to have a sit down with a few of the parents, a few of the Gold Star moms who had lost their children. Here's a bit of this, and then we'll talk more about actually what happened that day and how it could have all been avoided. So uh, let's go ahead and roll this first part, and we'll come back around the other side. Of course, Sergeant Nicole G was among them. She shared with me that she had never seen people so desperate. Um, and I think once she saw that, she was just going to give 100% to help them be rescued. Nicole posting this image with an Afghan child less than a week before her death with the caption, I love my job. And that's exactly, I feel like, how everybody there felt. They loved what they were doing and they were so proud. 
31-year-old Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover certainly loved his. He was on his third deployment to Afghanistan. I have heard from many of his friends, um, his men, that had said that when it was time for them to take a break, um, he didn't want to. He wanted to stay out there and continue to bring people in. And 22-year-old Humberto Sanchez, known as Bert, who had joined the Marine Corps at 17 with permission from his mother, Coral. One day he should show up and say, I want you to go and sign up because I enlist in the Marines. And I said, why? And he said, because I want to be the best of the best and I want to make you proud. These Marines, just three of the 13 U.S. service members and more. Obviously, like I said, it's tragic. You don't want to lose a child. Now, I did say I would talk a little bit about why it is that people don't want to join. And this far as the reason why. There's also other reasons why, but when you have leadership in office that, quite frankly, is out to lunch, nobody's going to want to serve under that. Now, here's the thing. Let's go back in time. I don't think we have to talk about the politics of the war itself. I mean, I'm pretty sure that everybody was tired of the Afghanistan situation. We've been there for 20 years, right after September the 11th. Uh, when former President Trump got in office, he was trying to negotiate us out of there. But then again, though, at the same time, he was also held up the information that we got. There was even this one guy who even admitted that they were lying to him about the information that was being given to him. I'll link the article in the description box. I probably just put the headline, the B-roll footage here. But then if you fast forward to just before he came out of office, he had negotiated with the Taliban, which, by the way, was a deal that I was not exactly a fan of. I mean, I'm a Trump voter, but I can obviously criticize him on some things. I was not a fan of said deal. But at least that deal was conditions-based. Basically, the deal was that we would leave Afghanistan. We would leave a few thousand troops on the ground. And, of course, conditions-based. At the time, we would either A, leave, downsize, depending on the situation, or we may have to put more people in. As I said before, it's conditions based. The Taliban agreed to it. Like I said, I wasn't a full fan of the deal. I was just just most just just get the hell out of there without handing over a bunch of prisoners. So Biden comes into office and he completely usurps that deal and he chooses to push back that date to September the eleventh. It would have been twenty years to the day. He was basically looking for a photo op. That's pretty much what he was looking for. He was looking for a political victory. Let's just go ahead and be honest. Still though, uh, that day. That day that it happened. By the way, this one was a disaster. Probably the most embarrassing disaster since the fall of Saigon and how we left. This entire situation could have been avoided. And the biggest reason why it could have been avoided. And I know there's a lot more nuance here, but the main sticking point of this entire situation was that a suicide bomber went in there, killed 11 of our Marines, a corpsman, and a staff sergeant in the Army. Now, what I'm trying to say when I say it could have been avoided is that like a bunch of idiots, they chose to shut down one of the air stations because there's two, Bagram and Kabul. They chose to shut down one of the air stations that we could have used to filter men out with. If you'd have had that, we could have gotten the job done a lot faster and it's very possible that uh, these men and women may still be alive today. But here are their stories. More than 170 Afghans killed outside Abbey Gate on August 26th when a suicide bomber exploded in the crowd. Christy Shamblin was on vacation with Nicole's husband, her son Jared, also a Marine. As soon as we saw the news that 13 service members had been killed, he, he said to me, Mom, I have a very bad feeling. Um, and we stayed up that whole night waiting for our phone call that we, <clears throat> we knew was coming. Um, as soon, you know, as time wore on and we didn't hear from her, my son knew. Um, I was, I think, in shock or denial. Like Nicole's relatives, Taylor Hoover's too were gripped by fear. I t kept texting him, are you okay, are you good? I had a horrible feeling. I had a three-hour three, uh, three hour drive back to my house. That hell of a drive home, I was sobbing. I knew something was wrong. Um, I could feel it. Um, I got home around 7 p.m. Doorbell rang. I, I, we don't, we're, nobody's allowed to use that door, doorbell anymore. Um, 
And uh, I looked at my son-in-law and we both just dropped um, before we even looked at the door. We knew. I don't remember much more from that night, but I remember that moment. Sleep, but I cannot sleep. I was awake. And at 1.42, I hear my phone vibrating under my pillow. I didn't want to answer. It rings again. I wake up my husband and I said, they are calling again from California. And he said, you have to answer that call. I'm like, I'm not, you are gonna have to answer. And he's like, get up and answer that phone. And I give them my address and they said, we're gonna be there in a few minutes. So as soon as I went downstairs, I still have that, that hope that they were gonna say, your son got wounded and we have to take you somewhere. When I look at the window, I just told my husband and I said, please tell me that they are not full dress. And then he just shake his head. I would argue that about 90% of us that take that oath to serve and protect the Constitution of the United States, we really and truly do care about what it is that we're serving. You see, we're serving you. We're serving the person next to us. We're doing what we're doing in service to you. Okay, that right there is what we're doing. Now, I'm not the most gung-ho guy in the world, and I'm not some badass, even though I serve with men that were definitely a lot more badass than me. But still, at the same time, though, they serve you. All right, that, that right there is the whole point of the situation. Of course, in the video that I did or I released earlier today about the woke VA undersecretary wanting to get rid of an iconic photo, the photo of the uh, sailor kissing the uh, nurse on V-Day, this right here is what's being undone. It's American history. It's being undone from the from the very, very bottom. People are complaining about stuff like uh, iconic photos. They're complaining about pronouns, crap like that right there. You're losing the discipline and the order in your military itself. And, of course, it's also killing overall morale, and nobody wants to join. But it's especially bad when you find out that the leadership that you have that's overseeing you it's probably going to get you killed because it's incompetent or because it wants a photo op. I just figure I would throw that out there. Let's watch a little bit more. I'm going to let this man run a little bit longer. Days later, the remains of all 13 service members would arrive at Dover Air Base, greeted by President Biden. But these families say he offered little comfort. The administration didn't seem to know our story. They didn't seem to know... Nicole's name, our names. Um, people from the military certainly knew our story, Nicole's name, our names, and that was expressed to us in a way that felt very genuine and loving. But when it came to the people in suits, it, it felt disingenuous and um, hollow. First, he called me Mrs. Lopez. Hey guys, I'll get to Biden's watch checking moment and stuff. I'll get to that a little bit more towards the end because I think it sums up the overall attitude of why it is that nobody feels that America is worth serving. But we'll get to that more towards the end. Lopez. And I was not Mrs. Lopez. And he just talked about his son and said how much he knows or he understand how do we feel because he lost his kid and he didn't feel, he didn't know how we feel because he was there with his son when he passed. We didn't have that privilege. We received our kids in a casket. So I just feel so disrespectful by that man because it was all about him. Now, this right here may seem a little bit, let's just say it, it may seem like it's unimportant, but trust me, it is important. When I was in, I joined in November 03. I got out in November 07. My two deployments were fall of 2004 into the spring of 2005 and uh, March of 2006. And I got back home late October 2006. OIF 2 TAC 2, OIF 5 TAC 7, Operation Phantom Fury. Uh, that right there was my flight second tank battalion Alpha Company. I'm not going to give you guys any more information than that. I normally don't do that much anyways when it comes to military record because I try not to mention it as much as, uh, as possible. But still, though, the thing, I said I try not to mention as much as possible, but still, the thing is this right here. Uh, when I was in, you didn't have cell phones to con uh, to, uh, to text back and forth. You didn't have cell phones to call back and forth. And by the way, I'm not complaining or anything. I'm just trying to make a point. 
what would happen is that if you want to talk to your parents, if you got a chance or if you want to talk to your girlfriend or whatnot, you had to get one of those good old-fashioned phone cards. And by the way, when you're calling from a AT&T center, it was in control of that stuff, or they, at least that was the name of the centers at the time we'd actually call back home. Uh, you would get a uh, card that had like 100-some-odd minutes on it, but yet you would only get about maybe 30 of it. It's just kind of the way it is. You'd pay money for this uh, phone card, and that is what you'd get. It's about 30 minutes on a 100-minute card. Strange. But the thing is this right here, your parents didn't really know what was really going on at the time, okay? This right here is a little bit different. You're not getting any text messages or anything from your son, which I personally think that this rule should be a little bit stricter, and I think it's actually gone to, uh, I think it's actually aided in the, uh, the lack of discipline that we have. I don't think the men should be able to actually call home from their cell phones. You should have to go back through the phone center like I said, for, I understand it's a bit of a jip. The military should do a better job of that. But still, though, the thing is this right here. When you're in constant, and I mean constant, communication with mom or dad or whatever, unlike we did in the old days where you just called them when you got a chance every couple of days or whatnot, uh, they tend to get a little bit worried. If they tend to get a little bit worried, they can now go to your command, which, by the way, your company is deployed overseas, but they can still go to your battalion command and raise 15 counts to help say, where the hell is my child at? Now, I understand as a concerned parent that you're obviously going to think, well, dude, what, 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 where the hell did this right come from? What I'm saying is, is that the old days, parents didn't have to worry as much. This right here is going to cause more worry, more panic, and more fear. I can already hear somebody saying, well, at least she was better prepared for it. No, 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 no. Nobody is prepared to hear that their child is dead. Okay. Nobody is prepared to hear how their child died. Some of these deaths are pretty daggone gruesome. I'll leave this video right here in the description box, a video I did on Gear Issue 33 about uh, Chance Phillips in the film Taking Chance. The way he died was pretty daggone gruesome. Sometimes it's not just the fact that you heard that your child died. A lot of times the fact is how they died. And of course, in this case right here, these men died needlessly because, quite frankly, they did not need to die. They died because of incompetence. Let's watch the last bit. Not meet with the president. So we were actually in a, a room um, on the side. We had decided because strong opinions and then out on the on the tarmac, it made it even worse. Um, the disrespect that we were shown with him checking his watch, um, not even looking at us. I, 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 it was just total disrespect. Someone screamed it. President Biden burn in hell. That was my daughter. Basically what that lady there said, you know, when you talk about Biden, and I know I haven't really mentioned Biden, and of course him checking his watch, how out of touch he is. I understand he's an old fart, but still at the same time, there are some people out there who are old and elderly who are definitely with it. But the thing is this right here, Joe, you got to see your son right before he died. These parents didn't get to see their child. It takes a special type of arrogance to suddenly walk up to some people whose children had died, died because you took your eye off the ball or because, and by the way, Lloyd Austin never got fired. Mark Milley never got fired. Mark Milley was allowed to resign a year later. All right, there was never any real accountability. A lot like the lady from the VA that I mentioned earlier today, which I forgot to bring this point in, but she never got, fired from her job, still works there. People demand accountability. These people lost their children. Joe, on the other hand, yes, he lost his son. He lost Bo. But still, at the same time, though, he lost Bo while he was here, not overseas. Just figure I'd point that out. Now, guys, I want to end the video here. Number one, that father had every right in the world to be angry. He had every right in the world to be pissed off. He had every right in the world to feel the way it is. These mothers have every right in the world to feel the way they do. Mark Milley and Lloyd Austin, they never got fired. Mark Milley's not there anymore. People who actually ordered one of these bases shut down. I can't imagine, even though me being a veteran myself, knowing that my mother had to sit back and wait on the possibility of a phone call or the possibility of a men showing up in service alphas, my father too, stepfather, sister, close family. Can't imagine that. 
Okay. I just, just can't imagine that at all. And something else too, and it goes back to what I said before, Joe, your son was here. Okay. Your son was here. He was stateside. You got to spend time with your son before he died. These, these people right here, they lost their, their children just like that due to your irresponsibility as a leader. And you want to know why it is that people don't want to join this military? You want to know why it is that people don't want to have anything to do with it? Nobody wants to serve a leader who's out to lunch. Nobody wants to serve a leader who's checked out. Nobody wants to serve somebody who does not have the best interest or does not have their best interest in mind. To all these uh, people out here who get upset the minute you uh, you misgender them or you get one of their pronouns wrong or some crap like that, you know, these men and women, they serve you. That's who they serve. They, they, they serve you. They, they, they serve your right to be an idiot. They serve you. They, they do what they do so that way you can have a right to claim whatever the hell you want. I just figured you should know that. This video right here was not meant to be a rant, but obviously it did turn into one. The video, the video that's going to be coming out on Gear Issue 33 is obviously going to be a little bit more technical because I'm going to be going through some of the other things that have uh, happened to the military recently. Uh, the 24,000 that have been let go, and of course also not that, but also the U.S. Army now is deciding not to pay people uh, bonuses. I'll be talking more about that as well as bringing this issue right here back up on Gear Issue 33 in my video on Sunday. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. Please sign off in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say. Please tell me what you think. If you disagree, you disagree. That's okay. But just please tell me what you think. And uh, also something else too. Please hit the notifications bell so that way you guys are notified when these videos come out. And uh, I'll see you guys later.